New York at the time. It's like the Dylan song, when you've got nothing, you've got nothing to lose, and I had nothing. So I told all my friends I was going to do stand-up comedy. They told me, well, you got to audition at Catch a Rising Star. I said, OK, well, where's that? <laughs> <laughs> it was the 1980s in New York City. Stand-up comedy was hot, and one club was at the center of it all. Catch a rising star in the 80s, that was the place. Rolling Stone called it the Studio 54 of comedy clubs. It was the golden age of stand-up, and I was there. Welcome to the stage, Mr. Lou DiMaggio, ladies and gentlemen. The last girl I went out with was the most uptight person I ever met in my life, but she had a good excuse. Uh, she went to Catholic school and Vietnam, okay? So. In 1989, I was on top of the world. But then, I threw it all away. That was sad to me when Lou stopped doing stand-up. It was sad. This is my story. It's about getting a second chance to do the one thing I was ever great at. All I know is that this is unfinished business of what I started to do. I need to find out if I can still do that again. I'd like to pursue I mean, a dancing you know, career. This is a real thing that I did, and it's an art form, and you can't dabble. You either do it or you don't do it. Why did you let it go? You know, I was going through a divorce. Did she get the act? <laughs> <laughs> I want to really do it right this time. Halfway through, you're gonna be like, holy Christ, no one's laughing. I'm going back and forth from being just scared to being terrified. Where are the jokes? No one knows who the hell you are. <laughs> and they all told me to get across to you that they don't care. I never got laid as a result of stand-up, unless you, I guess you can count my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Which means six times. <laughs>